Hey guys, welcome to the most cliche photography YouTube video you could possibly make. And that is a what is in my camera bag for 2021. I didn't think I would ever be making one of these videos, but I get more questions than I thought I would ever get about what camera gear I'm using. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss everything I use for street photography, video work, YouTube stuff like this, and everything in between. Now what's in my camera bag does change from day to day. It's not ever exactly the same. So I thought I'd just let you know from the beginning that if I was to go out and do street photography, I wouldn't include everything that I'm about to mention, I would try and keep it as minimal as possible. And when I'm going on a really important video shoot, I would probably take as much as possible and cram it into the bag that I'm gonna show you. So things change, circumstances change. This is by no means the same every single day, but I'm gonna give you an overview of most of the gear that I use on a regular basis. This video is sponsored by Sennheiser, and I'll talk more about their products later on. The first thing you're supposed to talk about in these videos is the bag itself. So I'm using a Wondred PRBKE however you pronounce that, but it is a PRVKE 31 litre Wondred bag. I got the bag in black because I don't like being very loud with my camera gear. I think they do a really nice beige or white colour, which looks sick, but I don't really want to walk around with that all the time. People are going to notice you a lot. And if you've got expensive gear, you kind of want to draw the attention away from yourself, especially if you're a street photographer. Ideally, people don't want to be coming up to you and complimenting you on your outfit most of the time. So uh, I like to try and, I mean, I'm wearing black now. I like to keep things minimal. Although saying that regular viewers of this channel will know that I always wear pink hoodies and stuff. But anyway, I'm waffling here. My experience with this bag has been great so far. If anything, this bag is actually a little bit too big. You can get a 21 litre version of it, which maybe I should have got. But I was buying the camera bag in haste and hurry because I needed a camera bag. I didn't have one, my other one broke and it was the only one that park cameras had in stock. So maybe a 21 litre would be better for you if you're watching this video and interested in what camera bag to get next. But the 31 litre is good as well and uh, it holds everything I need it to hold. So let's talk about exactly what goes in the camera bag and uh, why I've picked certain pieces of gear and equipment. In the side pocket of the bag, we've got my wallet, which if I'm out and about doing street photography or anywhere in some sketch situations I won't put it in the side of the bag which can be easily pickpocketed I'll put it um, inside in one of the zips in a more secure place but this little side pocket's great you can open it up you can even put a little tripod in here which moves me nicely onto the tripod I use mostly if I'm out and about is this Joby typically for YouTube typically for vlogging not necessarily the most professional tripod but it definitely does the job so if the tripod's coming along with me for some basic shoots both video and photo stuff mainly if I'm just wandering around London doing some YouTube related stuff then the Joby tripod can simply slot into the side here so the bag does have a nice little side pocket for me to put my wallet or Joby tripod in. On the other side of the bag there's a quick access point which I've not ever used. I don't really feel comfortable just swinging my bag around and accessing it quickly. I'd rather just put the bag down and get my gear out nice and slowly. Uh, hopefully I'm never in a rush so I don't need to use it but it's there and it has a quick access point so if you're into that kind of thing maybe you like that but yeah I've never really used it. Within the quick access point there's a couple of zips which is nice. This bag has a lot of hidden little spots and little pockets for you to put you know SD card or little wiring or anything miscellaneous related, um, you'll find a couple of pockets and stuff um, all over this bag, which is quite nice. To access the main part of the bag, you just put it on its front and open it up from the back. I really like this. Some bags you can open up from the back, which to me is a little bit sketchy in case anyone decided to just do you over and unzip you from behind. That sounds weird. <laughs> You get my point, uh, to access this bag, yeah, you have to put it down and open it from the front. Or put it on its front and open it up from behind. So yeah, seems quite safe and is easy to get into really. When I bought the bag, I did have an option to just buy it empty or with a cube case inside. And I got the cube case, so it comes with all the compartments which you can customize and move around depending on what gear you wanted to put where. In the top section, you've just got this open piece here for pretty much anything. All of my random bits of bobs go in here. So there's two quite big areas for you to cram in whatever gear you need, which I do like about it. That's probably why I do like the 31 litre version because there's lots of space and I don't find myself running out of room very often. That's pretty much it about the bag to be fair. I could go into more specific detail but just google it. Go on the Wondred website. I'll put a link down below. Affiliate link obviously. Actually hopefully it'll be in Amazon. If there's an affiliate link down below it'll be Amazon uh, but check out the bag if you are interested. I recommend it. It's pretty good and I've had it for like eight or nine months now. Let's talk about the main piece of equipment here and that is the Canon R6 which is my main camera for everything photo and video related. If you only know me online through Instagram and YouTube you might just just think I do a lot of street photography, which is true. But as an actual job, I make a lot of videos for people. I am both a photographer and a videographer. The Canon R6 
is a perfect hybrid for both of them. Now, I could make a specific Canon R6 review, which I have done. I've made a seven day review and a three month review, and I've talked about my photography settings, my video settings. So there's a, there is quite a few Canon R6 videos on this channel. For now, I'm gonna keep this basic. The Canon R6 comes with me everywhere. It's my main camera for both video and photo, and I love it. I have a choice of three main lenses that come with me as well. I'm recording with the 16 to 35 mil right now on my face with the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Mist Edition. 2. I'll talk more about that filter in just a second. But the three lenses I mainly use are the kit lens, the 24 to 105, which is, um, you know, f4 to 7.1. It's not fixed, so not great in low light, but a very versatile lens, nevertheless. Nevertheless? Nonetheless, a very versatile lens, which I use for some street photography stuff and a lot of video stuff, to be fair. Um, it's a great RF lens, really sharp, but the, the f-stop does change, the aperture isn't fixed, so it goes from f7.1, so that is its biggest con, really. The third lens I like to bring with me everywhere is the 50mm 1.8. It is only an EF 50mm, it's quite an old lens. It was actually the first lens that I got, but the 50mm is so good for so many different photography-related needs. Portraits, product shots, street stuff, I use it all the time, so it comes with me in my bag. You know, I'm not going to be ashamed with having cheap gear. The 50mm really is great and it doesn't let me down. It does feel a little bit plasticky and I feel like I could get rid of it and replace it with an RF version, which I really want to do. But I'm just reluctant to buy gear all the time because that's a trap that we could all fall into. Um, I've got a 50mm, so why do I need to buy a new one unless it breaks? So uh, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm on the back foot here explaining why I like the 50mm so much, but it really is a great lens. To wrap up the main pieces of gear in glass I use, it's the 16 to 35 f2.0. 8 Mark II. Fantastic lens for most video related stuff. I use it nearly every single day. Been loving it for street photography as well recently, which I didn't think I would that much, but it's a great lens. The 24 to 105 kit lens, RF, and then the 50mm 1.8. And then of course, all of those are used with the Canon R6 for both video and photo. So yeah, they're the main lenses and camera that I use almost on a daily basis. But I wanna talk about the most recent purchase of mine, which was the Polar Pro Pete McKinnon Variable ND Mist Edition 2, which I'm using now on my face. Hopefully everything looks a little bit softer and that lamp in the background hopefully is glowing a little bit. Um, I've only had this about a week. Maybe I'll do a review or so, um, a review or so. Maybe I'll do a review further down the line. Uh, but so far I've liked it. I've done a couple of street stuff with it. I filmed a couple of videos with it. I'm filming this YouTube video with it and hopefully it all looks great. So yeah, a new addition to the camera bag is the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro Very Blendy Mist Edition 2. They could have shortened that name, I think, somehow, but yeah. That's what I'm using right now. One more thing that goes into this main part of my camera bag is the MKE 400 Sennheiser directional microphone. If you're a videographer or you're getting started in making videos, please don't tell me you're using the in-body camera audio. No camera has great audio as it comes. You need to get an external microphone. I'm sure that goes without saying, but the MKE 400 is amazing. And I'm recording this video with it right now, so hopefully all this sounds crisp and fantastic. If so, then that is the microphone doing its job. The MK the 400 is a perfect professional directional shotgun microphone. I just said a lot of words there. Basically, it makes your audio sound sick. Now, I want to do just a quick comparison. You'll listen to my voice right now on the MKE 400. Sounds pretty good. I hope you like how this sounds. And now you're listening to my voice just out of the Canon R6 raw audio, which doesn't sound good. So let's put the microphone back on. So I think we can agree the MKE 400 audio sounds much better than the Canon R6 raw audio clip that you've just listened to. Um, I wanna compare it to a more budget microphone. So this is the Rode Video Micro Go. And I used this microphone for the most simple of audio needs for a while. I used it for a lot of YouTube videos, um, but this comes off quite easily. Build quality is not you know, amazing, but it is a lot cheaper. And I've recommended this microphone for people that are just getting started in video stuff. Now I've stepped it up a little bit to the MKE 400. I'm so pleased I won't, and I definitely won't be going back. A deal breaker for me, which meant that I always use this, was this plugs directly into the camera and you don't need to turn it on. Now the quality isn't that professional and I could have upgraded a long time ago, but I didn't really want to because knowing me when I'm out and about and I'm filming YouTube videos, I'm vlogging, I'm doing some street photography, I would forget to turn it on. And with a microphone like this, you don't need to turn it on, it just plugs straight into the camera. But I just didn't trust myself about simply turning the microphone on. Well, with the MKE 400, the quality is extremely professional, sounds amazing as you can tell right now. But once you've plugged it into the camera, it will automatically turn itself on. Just amazing. I just don't trust myself that much. I never improved my audio, but here we are with a much better microphone and it turns on automatically. You might have gathered that this channel isn't all about tech and I'm not gonna do the most in-depth product review, but this microphone right now 
now is so professional and so easy to use. I love it. The microphone does have an integrated shock mount and windshield, gain control, a low cut filter and a headphone jack and headphone control. So if you are a professional videographer and you want to use a more professional microphone or you want to step up your audio game, then I definitely recommend this microphone. Shout out Sennheiser. Links will be below as well if you're interested to know more about the microphone. So that's the microphone that I carry around with me almost every single day, whether I'm doing some simple YouTube stuff or a more professional video. Another piece of Sennheiser equipment, which Sennheiser don't know I'm going to mention, is this Sennheiser AVX lapel mic. This is a step even further into more professional audio. That lapel is around 600, I think 500, 600 pounds, and I use that for most of my really important video work. So that's nice and small. That lapel system within itself sits nicely in the top compartment of my bag. So that covers pretty much all my audio needs. I've got the Sennheiser MKE 400 directional microphone, which I'm using to record this video, but also the Sennheiser AVX lapel if I'm doing interviews, if I'm recording podcasts. If I'm doing more professional video needs, then those are the two microphones that come with me. Also in the top part of my bag in the top compartment, we have the GoPro chest mount and the GoPro Hero 7 Silver, which I record all my POVs with. This actually isn't the GoPro chest mount. This is a third party chest mount. I don't know why you would pay extra to get a chest mount that does the exact same thing just clips on there and boom, we're ready to go. And I use the GoPro to film all my POVs. So if you are an avid viewer of this YouTube channel, you know I do a lot of street photography, you know I do a lot of POV street photography, and this is the setup I use. The GoPro Hero 7 Silver, and the and a random third party chest mount. I probably will be upgrading the GoPro because it runs out of battery quite easily. And, and this is like the only GoPro where you can't change the battery. So I'll probably be upgrading to a GoPro 8 or 9 at some point soon. But yeah, this is the setup that comes with me every time I'm doing street photography, if I'm out in London. If I'm out in a city doing some POV stuff, this is what I use. Something else I carry with me all the time is these Bose Quiet Comforts. Two, I think they are. These headphones I bought around two years ago and it's probably the best 300 pounds, 350 pounds I ever spent. I use these nearly every single day and they're noise cancelling, they're amazing for video editing, they're amazing just for listening to some tunes uh, and that was weird because I couldn't hear myself. So yeah, if we're talking headphones, they're the ones that come with me almost every single day. Maybe not if I'm doing street photography, I won't need to bring them with me. But if I'm out and about editing videos, working, then yeah, the headphones come with me pretty much all the time. Something else you'll find in the top compartment of my bag is this lacy two terabyte hard drive. Um, I've got a couple of these backed up multiple times. I carry around this with me all the time. It's very rugged and um, yeah, they're just very well known for being a very safe external hard drive. So yeah, this is the Lacey two terabyte that I have with me at the moment. That comes with me pretty much all the time. Again, maybe not if I'm doing street photography, I don't need to have this with me, but it does fit nicely in the top compartment of my wandering bag. So uh, if I am working and doing some serious stuff that needs to be um, backed up and it needs to go on an external hard drive, this is the one I use. In the top compartment of the bag, you'll also see Dongle City because I've got a MacBook Pro, so they're always lying around in my bag, which neatly brings me on to the MacBook Pro, which is behind me, is the MacBook Pro 16 inch uh, 2019, I think it came out. Uh, I bought it around eight months ago and I put the specs on screen. I'll show you what that looks like for those that are really interested. The MacBook slots nicely into the 31 liter Wondred bag. I wasn't sure if it would fit into the 21 liter Wondred bag. So that is one of the reasons why I got the bigger Wondred 31 liter bag. And it fits nicely in here. That comes with me pretty much every time I leave my house and go out and do any kind of work, the MacBook comes with me. So yeah, if you are interested in the specs that I use to edit and do a lot of video work and a lot of photo work, well, all of my work, I pretty much on my, I pretty much live on my MacBook Pro. Then I'll put the specs on screen and in the description so you can see uh, what I'm using. Uh, one final thing, sometimes a notebook will come with me. This is a new Ted Baker notebook, which makes me sound really poncy. I'm not actually that posh. I did see this in a charity shop. I think, was I in a charity shop? I was like, that's sick. And so yeah, I've got a notebook which comes with me now and then. For the nerds out there, I've always used moleskin notebooks because they're sick. So so regardless of what notebook I'm using, there will be one in my camera bag for note taking. I can't believe I've just had to explain what a notebook's for, but you get the point. <laughs> so that's everything that goes in my camera bag. The camera bag is a Wondred PRVKE 31 liter. I use the Canon R6, 16 to 35 mil lens, the RF kit lens, 24 to 105, the 50 mil, the Sennheiser MKE 400, the sponsors of this video, the Sennheiser AVX lapel, 
the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro Varial Lendy Mist Edition 2. Um, what else is there? The GoPro Hero 7 Silver, the strap, my wallet, a Joby tripod, and probably some other stuff that I forgot to mention. Links in the description if you're interested in any of the gear. They will be Amazon affiliate links, so I will get a little bit of Wonga if you're interested in purchasing. That's pretty much it for me. If you want to support the channel, check out my website, mikejudley.com. I've got some presets and other bits and bobs. So if you're interested, then yeah, that's where you can go for that. Click subscribe, leave a like, comment down below, share your thoughts and opinions, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.